What's going on guys? I'm going to take you through a carnivore diet day of eating and if it did not start at the grill, where would it start? The first thing I do at every single meal whenever I want to eat is I get my grill started so that I can prep the meat while it heats up. And this is a Weber Spirit propane grill but I actually cook over a wood fire and let me show you how. So if you look inside, there's no grease plates or heat distribution plates in the grill. I took those off and I put the old grates on top of the burners. And then I bought some new grates and what I do is I lay any hardwood over those grates on top of the burner. So this is birch wood. I usually prefer oak or cherry for flavor. And this is essentially all I really did. It's very simple. This is really quick. It literally takes me like a minute or two to chop up the wood, throw it in the grill. And the nice thing about this is how quickly it heats up. So all I do is I just, I turn the gas on. Burner lights the flame. The nice thing about this is how fast we get a very, very hot grill. The hardwood is very dry. We have a gas assisted start. So we will have our own pillar of hell in about three minutes. All right guys, it's been about, I would say five minutes and this fire is nice and hot. In regards to what I'm eating today, I have a grass-fed beef belly, really beautiful orange color on it. I'm just gonna throw this on the grill and we're gonna get a quick sear on the outside just to caramelize it, get the Maillard reaction, and then we'll go back inside and we'll let it sit in the oven for a few minutes. In addition to that, sometimes I cook some meat for my family, so today for them, I have a ribeye steak that I'll just throw on the grill. And also for myself, I have some marrow bones. If I don't eat these myself, I'll throw some of the bone marrow on the steak for my family. All I'm really trying to do is just get that wood fire flavor on the outside of the belly. So you wanna make sure not to put too much wood in the grill because you want the flames to be licking the surface of the meat. You don't want the meat to be engulfed in flames. That's the difference between getting a black char and a nice brown crust. But keep in mind, we don't actually have to do that to the fat because the fat is just going to melt and render. What we're trying not to burn is the muscle. You guys want like a steak grilling ASMR video just like 10 minutes of me flipping a steak? The beef belly is nice and caramelized. It's still super raw in the middle, so we'll throw it in the oven when we go inside. For bone marrow, I put it directly in the fire. And, and since the bone marrow is fat, it can't really burn. It's just gonna keep melting, so. The main reason I put the bone marrow on the flame is to kill any bacteria on the outside that was maybe from the butcher saw that they used to cut it. So, bone marrow about 10 seconds on the main side. And just like the belly, I keep the marrow raw on the inside, I just sear the outside. My family's sake, of course, I'll just throw it in the oven later and bring it to temperature. If you guys wanna know more about cooking principles and how to get a really good sear on a steak, I have a video you can look up, New York City style steak. It, it's a great explanation of how you need to dry out the steak surface. You have to have fat to caramelize the steak. All right, so I'm just gonna finish grilling my family steak and then we'll go inside and eat. This beautiful steak crust we got only took about three minutes. This is why I love doing this wood fire method so much. Now the steak's completely raw on the inside, so we can either continue to cook it on the grill or we could just take it inside and put it in the oven. Saves a lot of time. I just threw the beef belly in the oven. So my goals in general are nutrient density, low inflammatory foods, and part of nutrient density is consuming fermented foods. This is because every one of our ancestors consumed large amounts of high quality fermented animal foods to get vitamin K2. 
Vitamin K2, very important for calcium metabolism, blood health, bone health. Probably one of the vitamins that we're missing the most of in modern diets. And here, if you're wondering why this jar is in a plastic bag, it's not too, uh, doesn't smell too good. So what I have in this jar is bone marrow. What I do is I scoop some bone marrow out of the bones. I put it in a jar and I let it sit on my counter for about a week. And this is not for the faint of heart. Uh, indigenous preparations might have been examples of, it's not, indigenous examples might have been like kiviak or muktuk. They would take maybe like a hundred birds, thousands of birds even, bury them in a seal skin and let it sit for over a year in the ground. In the warmer climates, they would let fish ferment in the sun for like six, seven, eight days. So there, there's no real temperature requirement to make high meat. It just has to be in an aerobic environment like a jar with air in it. And it needs to be maybe aired out once every few days. This is akin to cheese. And the reason I used bone marrow is because, well, bone marrow is very nutrient dense. Uh, I think it would be pretty high in all the fat type of vitamins before it ferments. So maybe the K2 content is higher when it ferments. Uh, Frank, why don't you just eat some cheese? Yes, I could eat some cheese, but I'm allergic to dairy. Uh, Parmigiano Reggiano, I think, is a very affordable and high quality cheese made from raw milk for any of you guys. Uh, if you did this, what, this is so funny. You, you guys saw the video uh, where I was wearing the beard for the testosterone and there's a beard hair in this. Uh, but when you do high meat with muscle meat, it's not nearly as funky and it's not as nutrient dense. I, I think doing high meat with something like bone marrow or fat is really, really good from a nutrient perspective. So all I do with this is I just have a few bites of it every day. And it doesn't taste nearly as bad as it smells. What I also like about this is when I eat the fat first, I become more satiated. So it's a great way to gauge your appetite. And when people tell me they eat, you know, three, four pounds of meat a day, like Sean Baker, I'm like, it doesn't have to be fermented marrow to not want to eat anymore. You, you just need to consume a high quality fat source and that will satiate your appetite. But there's something to be said about the nutrient density of foods like this and how satiating they are. You can't really eat more than a few bites without being full. So rotten meat is also referred to as high meat sometimes in a book, The Fat of the Land. Definitely check that out if you haven't read it. Let me know if you guys want to know more about like preparing this and making it and uh, who knows, maybe I'll do some videos in the future on it if you guys are interested. I think I actually did a video where I made some if you guys are curious. The meat has to be fresh, most important thing, and ideally high quality meat. Uh, pretty much put it in a jar, air it out every few days. Okay guys, so I took my beef belly out of the oven, but before my beef belly, here I have some kelp. Uh, this is kombu. This is from Maine Coast Sea Vegetables. Uh, this is on my Amazon shop. You can also get it at Whole Foods. It's a low temperature dehydrated seaweed. Uh, it has a good amount of potassium, some magnesium, but mainly for iodine. The main reason I consume this is iodine, secondary, sometimes potassium. So this is a third of a cup, eight servings per bag. I probably have about two servings uh, and what I did was you take the dried seaweed, you put it in a cup with some water and it, it rehydrates itself. You can eat it when it's dry, but it's a bit chewy. And this is something that I would do maybe once a week, once every two weeks, uh, just to get some iodine in. Uh, you know, those indigenous groups, those hunter gatherers that lived in mountainous areas had to go down to the ocean to gather things for iodine. So iodine, very, very important. I use seaweed. 
uh, when I don't have access to fish row or fish eggs. Uh, and since salmon row is out of season, since I haven't placed a bulk order at the fish market recently, I haven't been uh, consuming any iodine from seafood directly. Although I do recommend shellfish, crab, lobster, whatever it may be, are excellent sources of iodine. Uh, and I recommend them over seaweed, but this is better than nothing. So the seaweed sat in water, I think it takes like half an hour, an hour to soak. Uh, so I take the seaweed out. I'm going to save this water and I'll drink it later. But what I do is I just chop up the seaweed. And then I'll just chew it. All right, so let's take a look at the cooking temperature on this beef belly. And it doesn't have a cooking temperature because it's raw on the inside. Uh, normally I do salt my food, but I got some blood work recently and my chloride levels were a little bit high and I haven't really been craving salt and I've also been getting muscle cramps in my leg. So I'm gonna experiment without salt for a couple days. I'm gonna use seaweed for some potassium and see if my hydration pattern changes or if um, anything changes at all. Cuts like belly are a bit tougher to chew, but if you keep them raw and you slice against the grain, uh, it's not too bad. So the meat's essentially entirely raw. I'm technically a raw carnivore. It's just seared on the outside for a little bit of flavor. And I mean, that also kills the bacteria, but I'm not too concerned about bacteria if I'm eating raw bone marrow. So this beef has that like farmy, grassy hay flavor. It's not really like butterscotch. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is uh, I feel like having it a little more cooked today. So I'm going to throw it back in the oven and maybe cook it to rare instead of raw completely. And there's no benefit to raw versus cooked food. Uh, I say this time and time again. Every indigenous group consumed raw food, cooked food, fermented food. There's no right or wrong. What's right is consuming a variety of high quality animal foods. So I just put the steak in the oven for a few minutes on broil. Cooked food serves the purpose of calories primarily in indigenous diets. Raw food for nutrients and fermented food also alters the nutrient profile as well as the fatty acid profile of the food. So there's benefits to every single preparation of food and they're all necessary in the human diet. Guys, this is beef fat. This beef fat is so tasty. It's crazy. No salt, no seasoning, just a fire and some meat. A meal without salt is like 80% of the enjoyment of a normal meal with salt, maybe like 70%. So I definitely miss salt, even if I just do it for one day without it. But I'm going to try it for a couple more days and I'll maybe I'll give you guys an update on that. Maybe we ate total, I don't know, maybe like 50 grams of the raw bone marrow and then we just had the beef belly. So... Uh, I'm guessing we ate about a pound and a half to two pounds of fatty beef belly. In regards to vitamin profile of this meal, we just have a balanced amount of all the fat soluble vitamins. We have some vitamin A, some vitamin E, some vitamin K2, uh, actually plenty of vitamin K2 from the fermented bone marrow. And all of these foods, since they are grass fed and high quality, have decent amounts of the precursor linoleic and linoleic acid. So it's safe to say we're getting a decent amount of DHA from these foods. And that if you're consuming a diet like this with high quality grass fed fat, it's not too necessary to consume fish or really consume any fish at all. Uh, if you'd like to, you can have brain tissue maybe once a month, once a week, uh, depending on how you want to increase your DHA intake. But I don't think I'm going to eat anything else today. Uh, I prefer to eat earlier in the day. Uh, I digest and then I end up sleeping better. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you guys would like to support the channel, please like, subscribe, and share the video. If you guys want to check out my Amazon shop, uh, the seaweed's in there, uh, Patreon. I do have some exclusive videos on my Patreon, and I do answer questions in depth on there. Uh, I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. Uh, you guys can check that stuff out. If you guys want to buy my hygiene products from my tooth powder to my hair pomade, deodorant, all that stuff is on my website, frank defanocom And last but not least, if you guys would like to reach out to me for one-on-one -on -one consultations in regards to increasing the nutrient density of your diet, whatever it may be, you can send me an email or reach out to me through the contact form on my website. All of that stuff is in the comments down below.